I'm Owen Biglen. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, I'm going to cover all things landlords, the current sta status of the vacancy rate in Vancouver, rental rates continue to skyrocket. Uh, the uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the BC Landlords Association that represents us mom and pop landlords, small landlords in the province of BC, and how I think they're not doing enough to quash or debunk the socialist NDP rhetoric as well as just kind of uninformed renters that the reason their rents have skyrocketed so much the past three years is because of greedy landlords. I did a blog on this last month. I've talked about this endlessly for the last four years. Uh, I forecast this was going to happen back when COVID hit and the NDP started their war on landlords with the two-year rent freeze. Actually, I started it five years ago when they first came into power and removed the annual rent increase that we've had for the last 20 some odd years here in BC, where it was CPI, the inflation rate, plus 2%. And the NDP immediately removed that plus 2%. And as I'm going to go into, and I've talked about, they don't even give us the proper CPI or inflation. They fudge that number. Last year, they gave us, what, 2%. It should have been closer to 5 So. It's nuts. And I forecast to renters, I told you guys, this is going to have the reverse effect of what the NDP is telling you. It's going to make rents skyrocket, which it has. It's actually skyrocketed even more than I ever imagined. One of the big reasons for that is with the war on landlords, more and more small independent landlords have decided enough is enough and I'm going to sell my unit and I'm going to get out of the business. I've owned it for 10, 15, 20 years. I don't have a lot of leverage left on it anyways. I'm out. I'll take my money and go elsewhere with it. And, uh, and I've told, been documenting this for many years, how many condos I've been selling from investor clients. We try and sell, uh, get the tenants out with a mutual agreement and tenancy. In some cases I have to sell it with the tenant in it. But uh, eight out of 10, nine out of 10 of these are sold to end users. So there's another unit that is out of the renter pool. As you start to shrink the supply of rentals available, the rents go up and it's just simple economics. So I'm gonna cover a bunch of topics here, hope to bring it all together in a neat bow. I might get a little unwielding with it, but I think whether you're a homeowner or an investor or a renter, this is must watch TV for you guys here. So a couple of things I want to talk about. I talked about that myth of the greedy landlord. I'm still on it. I had a lot of uh, feedback on that video because uh, I've been doing this for many years on the myth of the greedy landlord. But I recently, I had a couple of uh, people reach out to me, a couple of uh, small you could call them commercial landlords that own 15, 20, 25 unit apartment buildings in the east side of Vancouver. One of them was in Kitsilano. And they just called me to say, hey, I enjoy your blogs. I've been want, uh, subscribing to your channel for many years. I want to thank you for standing up for us independent landlords somewhat, defending us here against the media and the uninformed renter that puts the blame on the greedy landlord. Those rents are going up because we're price gouging, which of course we're not. And these guys substantiated that. A couple, one of the guys I talked to had an apartment in Kits. He's, he's thinking about finally selling to a developer and getting out of it. He has tenants that have been in there for five, six, seven, eight years, can't raise the rent. He's losing money on them basically. And uh, of course, you need the 2% measly rent, rent increases he does get are faced with all kinds of opposition. When, of course, I've talked about it, the reasons for rents going up are a number of things. A, of course, the big one is, is that we've had this massive jump in interest rates. And every, most good landlords, like myself, we're going to have some leverage on the property. We're going to have a variable rate mortgage or a, perhaps a fixed term mortgage, which is going to come up for renewal at the current rates. And as they do, you know, those costs have to get passed on. For the most part, there, as long as the tenant stays, it's the landlord that's eating those increased uh, mortgage costs. But the other big ones are property taxes going up double digits for the past five or six years. Insurance going up, we're talking about 150% across the board over the last five years for insurance, both on the strata properties, the, the, the strata's policy, but of course on my individual policies. 
I'm with cooperators. I've been with the cooperators for all my properties for the last 22 years. I can tell you that eight years ago on one of my typical one bedrooms, I was paying about $300, $350 a year. That's now approaching close to $700 a year. So not only is my strata insurance skyrocketed, which is built into my maintenance fees, but my individual policies that I have to hold on all those properties has almost doubled in the last 10 years. Uh, you know, so expenses keep going up. Just the cost for me to keep a handyman to come in to fix a door or a lock that's broken or a toilet that needs fixing or replace an appliance has gone up substantially. Yet the NDP, of course, with their removing the CPI plus two, the two-year rent freeze during COVID, and now they're not even uh, giving us the proper CPI the last two years. They're fudging on that as well. I can't wait as I do this video. We're getting close to getting the announcement here from the NDP on what our allowable rent increase will be for 2024. And I just can't wait. Now it should be from the people I talk to, and I don't know, the, the math keeps changing on this, on what the true CPI is. I can tell you it was a lot more than 2% for 2023, but that's what they gave us. It should be somewhere around four and a half, five percent for 2024, but let's see what they give us. I don't think it's gonna be anywhere near that. Uh, and again, that whatever it is, let's call it 3% is not going to cover the cost to hold those properties. Renters have got it great. They're not a greedy landlord. You're getting supplemented in a lot of cases here by your so-called greedy landlord. But we, we got on to the topic of the BC Landlord Association. So if you guys aren't familiar with this, you know, this is an association that's supposed to represent us small landlords. The website is bclandlords.ca. And they've got a great website. They've got all kinds of resources. They've got a chat board in there. Uh, you know, they represent us BC landlords. And, you know, the, the discussion I had with this guy is, are they doing enough to, to, to represent us? And we both came to the conclusion they're not. Now, I don't want to throw the BC Landlord Association under the bus here at all. They have an incredibly difficult job, especially since we are in under socialist rule here with David Eby and the NDP who have had a war and a hate on for us landlords since they got into power. Of course, they have no clue about the service uh, and, and the, uh, you know, the products we deliver as far as a mom and pop landlord. It, we provide 85 to 90% of the quality rental stock in the lower mainland here. So without us, <laughs> those rental rates would be three times what they are now. And by the way, as far as rental rates go, the numbers just came out for September, they're up again. Average one bedroom now in Vancouver is close to $3,000 a month. I can tell you in 2019, pre-COVID, that would have been about 1950. So it's gone from 1950, 2000 to 3000. Thank the NDP for their war on landlords. The big reason for that too is the number of landlords again that are exiting. Just took another quick look and I've been talking about this for years. The number of one bedroom and some two bedrooms, but especially one bedroom condos in downtown Vancouver, Mount Pleasant, Fairview, Kitsilano that are listed on the Paragon system as tenant occupied is at an all time high. It's incredible. I could pull 20 units right now for downtown Vancouver and I bet you 15 of those are tenant occupied. There's a few that are owner occupied and a few that are vacant. And I can tell you the ones that are listed as vacant are listed by realtors like me that give their uh, seller good counsel and have bought that tenant out, which I'm gonna get to in a minute. So they had a tenant in there, bought them out and it's vacant. And let me just quickly off track here, talk about again quickly, selling a tenanted property. It's at an all time high, I'm telling you. It's unbelievable how many units are currently tenanted occupied. And again, I have to ask myself, are these sellers getting good counsel on this? I have to think they are not because I get dozens of calls from investors. I sell dozens and dozens of condos downtown every year as a top producer. I owe it to my sellers when they call me and they have a tenanted property. Yes, I can sell it, no problem. But I educate them on what your, uh, your uh, alternatives are here. What are your, your avenues here to sell this unit? I have to tell them, let's get the tenant out and here's why. Using a mutual agreement and tenancy. You have to pay your tenant one month's rent anyways if they stay and get them out uh, once you get a buyer on it. One, if, the principal residence, if the buyer is a principal residence buyer. But I tell them, let's sweeten the pot, give them two months rent, 
negotiate the mutual agreement to end tenancy and get them out of the unit. Now we can clean the unit up, make any minor fixes. We can virtually stage it. I'm not restricted on showing times. We can do a quick close, but here is where they are leaving tens of thousands of dollars on the table, especially in this current environment. It was already bad enough selling a tenanted property five years ago. I've been blogging about this for 10 years, but in today's current rental market, it is, <laughs> you are leaving a ton of money on the table and I don't think they realize because if you try and when you sell those units with a tenant occupied property on a month to month you are giving up about half of the uh, potential buyers which are investors they're not interested in your unit if it's got a tenant tied to it because the rents have spiked up huge here in the last two to three years so if a tenant's been in there, even for a year or a year and a half, he's paying or he, she's paying well below market rent. I mean, you see these ones where they're paying $1,800 a month rent. They've been in there for four years and the current rate is 3,100. So investors are not going to go near that. They don't want to inherit your tenant because they can't get the tenant back up to market rent. Get the tenant out, pay a little bit, and I'll get it back for you fivefold in your final selling price because now we're opening it up to the full demographic of buyers. Because and I'm going to do another blog on that this later this fall. I've talked about it. A lot of people say, well, it couldn't be a good time to be an investor, I guess, right? Interest rates have gone way up and the war against landlords with the NDP. Well, it's not that great if you're like me and have some long-term tenants that are paying way below market rent. I'm not too worried. Eventually, they gradually leave and I'll raise it back up to full market rent. But if you are a new investor and can place a tenant at the current rents, it is... In there are some incredible opportunities out there. I'm going to do a blog on this. I've had some sales this summer. We did not have to get into a bidding war. Paid close, just under 600K, and these are renting for 26, 2700 because we can place a new tenant in there. You plug your nose, get a one-year fixed or a two-year fixed at five percent, which you know isn't the greatest. And then in, in another year, or year and a half, two years, you, you'll refinance, hopefully at a little bit better rate. And then besides, the interest is all deductible anyways, and you can start with a full 80% leverage on it. So I'll do some blogs on that in a, in a little while. And an interesting phenomenon I'm starting to see where I've had a few people who sold investment units a year ago or even earlier this year that now want to get back into the market. Uh, because of course they can now re-leverage, get it at a good price without a bidding war, and we can place a tenant now at the current market rents. I'll stay tuned for a blog on that. But you know, by selling it vacant, now I have the entire demo, I can sell it now to an investor or a principal or an end user. So again, selling tenanted properties, occasionally I will sell a property that's tenanted. Usually what we do is we try and offer the tenant two months rent, even three months rent. If they won't take it, eventually it gets to a point, well, we're gonna sell it with or without you. I just had one $2 million unit over on Beach Avenue this summer, offered the tenant about $7,000 to, to leave or to sign a mutual agreement. She didn't wanna do it. I told her, listen, I'm gonna sell this unit fairly quick anyways, and it's gonna be an end user for $2 million, and you're gonna be out with two clear months, but she wanted to stay. I listed it, showed it for a week, got three offers, set a new record price on it. It was an incredible unit. The other thing which we didn't mind too much with her, she was a lovely lady, had this place absolutely mint. I, you know, I feel bad for these people, but listen, we sold it quick, gave her the two months notice and she was out. She could have pocketed $8,000 uh, if she would have just taken that mutual agreement to end tenancy, which at the end of the day probably would have been the best decision for. Back to the Landlords Association of BC. So I don't want to throw these guys under the bus too much because they're at war right now with the NDP, which is unprecedented. And they're, I'm going to call it the propaganda. They kind of perpetuate the NDP, the greedy landlord syndrome. They sure, certainly don't correct anybody when they start talking about landlords price gouging and why my rent's gone up. They'll never mention the removal of the CPI plus two, the two year rent freeze, the not giving us the proper CPI and all the other stuff that they've got against landlords right now. And of course the interest rates going up and everything else. No, no, it's never that. They kind of go along with the greedy landlord. Now, if you go onto the BC, uh, bclandlords.ca, they have a media page here. And look at what it says here. It says, you know, please contact us via uh, landlordmedia at execs.com. So there's an email address here. And, you know, I'm going to encourage 
mom and pop landlords, I know I've got a lot of you guys that watch it, maybe we should be getting in touch with the BC Landlord Association because I think they can be doing more here. But anyways, they say our group exists to protect and promote the interests of private residential landlords with most of our readers owning or managing rentals of less than 10 units. We're an important stakeholder playing an important role in British Columbia's economy and our voices have often been silent. Landlords are frequently looked down upon in the media, <laughs> they sure are, and by disgruntled renters. Ooh, you better believe it, especially right now. Uh, while the truth is that many landlords are committed to their work and to provide good quality housing for their tenants, agree. There's always going to be a few bad apples out there, which the media and the NDP love to, to put out there. You know, the fake rent evictions and all that other stuff. They are a very small minority. Most individual landlords are, are like myself and my clients. They own a few properties. They're, they're owning these properties for a couple of things. A, they want to diversify their investments. They don't want to put all their money in the stock market. They want to get take out a little bit of leverage, which is a, a good accelerator for, an, for, for investing. Uh, and you know they're not in this for cash flow or anything else. These are long-term investments. You're usually supplementing them in the early years uh, with the goal of getting some capital gains over the next 15 or 20 years. So it's not a get rich thing here investing in Vancouver real estate and putting tenants in. That's for sure. You know, what I wish though, here, if anyone's from the BC Landlord Association, you're welcome to reach out to me. I know you have a tough job against government like the NDP here who perpetuate this greedy landlord. What I would suggest and what I've talked to some of my uh, investor clients with as well as this larger investor in Kitsilano who owns an apartment building, why do we not hire a full-time media liaison? And that media liaison, not just anybody, he should be or she should be a lawyer or retired lawyer with a real estate and finance background. And probably not going to come cheap, maybe a hundred, hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars a year. Although, hey, you might be able to find a retired lawyer who's a landlord who knows about real estate that might be willing to do it. Who knows? Pro bono or maybe for fifty, sixty thousand a year would be available. And this media person would be available at the drop of a hat for any media outlet to contact or chime in. Give us uh, your rebuttal for any of these NDP dog and pony show press conferences that they're always holding and to give the straight goods on what's currently going on in the rental market and what uh, individual landlords are up against for, versus the NDP and the interest rates and the property taxes and the insurance and everything else. Set the record straight. You know, if it's a money thing, I'd be more than happy to donate 10, 15, 20 dollars a year. Uh, I know we wouldn't need that many. A couple thousand local real uh, uh, investors here, landlords, kick in 10 bucks, 20 bucks. There you go. We, I think we really need a pit bull type guy. It's really what I'd love to see, or a gal, someone who, again, a, a lawyer or a former lawyer uh, who who has a background in real estate to simply set the record straight, representing us small time uh, landlords. So maybe we should all start a small grassroots campaign here with bclandlords.ca. You know, I'd like to see see them doing more. And again, I don't want to throw them under the bus here. They're doing all they can. Maybe it's a budget thing, but the war against landlords with the NDP is unprecedented. We never had this issue 10 years ago. Uh, you know, we're at war now with them, removing all the rental increases, removing the CPI plus two, the rent freezes. Let's see what they give us for 2024. It's not going to be good. I, I can tell you right now, they should be giving us a 5% increase. And on top of that, they should actually allow us another 2 or 3% to make up for all the lost ground we've had over the last five years with COVID, interest rate hikes and everything else. But they will never do that. And you know, it's just going to make the problem worse if you're a renter. This I've been warning you guys for many years now, the socialist governments are going to kill you. They will kill you slowly, uh, yet people continue to vote for them like they're going to help us. They're our white knight. The cavalry is going to help save us here. Look at all these great things we're doing to keep your rents low. How does it work? Be honest. 
You know, if you're sitting in a condo right now, renting a condo, and you've been there for a couple of years, boy, you should, you know, you must be losing sleep because you're just waiting for that phone call for that landlord to tell you, I'm going to sell, my daughter's going to move into it, I'm going to move into it, my son's going to move into it, and you're going to have two months to leave. You're going to go from 2000 a month to 3200 a month overnight, even if you can find a condo. That's even if you can find one for rent right now. And this is not going to get any better. As a matter of fact, it's going to get far worse in the, in the near future here because I'm looking on the Paragon right now. Renters don't have access to this. And I'm seeing how many units here are currently listed. I would say 60%, 70% of the one-bedroom condos downtown are tenant-occupied. And I can tell you right now, because I sold nine or 10 last year, I've already sold four or five this year, six. The majority of those buyers are going to be end users, especially if they're trying to sell the unit tenanted. Because if they're trying to sell the unit tenanted, then if investors are not gonna go near it. If it's vacant, you at least have a 50-50 shot. It might be an end user or it might be an investor who can place a new tenant at the current rate. If it's uh, tenant occupied, which almost all these are, there's another, currently right now, there's probably 31 bedrooms down, just downtown, tenant occupied. There's 30 more units for you renters that are out of the market. They're not coming back. They're going to be end users because investors can buy them. They don't want to inherit you as a tenant at 2000 a month when the going rate is 3000 a month. And then to make matters worse, once they get you as a tenant, they can't raise the rent. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. So a lot of this could be solved without this government meddling. They should bring back CPI plus 5% is what they should do. They should have a, a couple of years here where they allow uh, landlords to recoup the added costs that we've got. But again, the myth of the greedy landlord, it's not there. Uh, I wish BC Landlord Association, I hope maybe they step up and do even more. I'd love to see them hire a full-time media person to start debunking some of this stuff and setting the record straight here. But again, it's only gonna get worse going forward. I'm gonna do another blog on new investors. It's a pretty good opportunity right now. Yeah, interest rates are up. They're not gonna stay up like this for too much longer. You're gonna probably start these CDs coming down late next year. But the rents have more, where the current rents are at, have more than made up for that in, in some ways, if you can place a new tenant. But of course, for existing landlords, it's, it's gonna be a little bit tough going here. And of course, the tenants know that. Once a tenant's been in your unit for a year, or year and a half, two years, they're not leaving. You know, we're gonna get a situation here unless something kind of changes here. You know, they had this in New York, you know, with rent control. And you still have that to some cases where, you know, you would have people that would live in these units for 15, 20 years. They would carry you out in a pine box uh, is how they would leave. They would never leave. Uh, or in a lot of cases, what they would do is they would bring someone in, a friend or family member under the table for cash and sublet your home uh, without letting the landlord know. Those are the kind of things that happen. There's still people in New York with two bedroom condos that market rent would be 5,000. They're paying 700. So it's not gonna make the situation any better because eventually what will just happen in that kind of situation is they'll just say enough is enough. I'll sell the unit, I've made my money on it, and it'll be an end user only. Therefore, shrinking the supply of current uh, available rentals, which will just continue to bring the prices up even further. I'm Old Big Len. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.